Welcome to Nationwide, reaching your life on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Kengdi Olale. Thanks for joining us. President Mohamed Bouhari this Tuesday granted audience to the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Ahmed Al Thani, on a one-day official visit. State House correspondent Adam Samba reports that the Qatar monarch was given a befitting reception by President Mohamed Bouhari on arrival at the State House. Sheikh Al Thani who is on a reciprocal visit, inspected a ceremonial guard of honor mounted by of officers and soldiers of the Presidential Guard Brigade. NT News recalls that during President Mohamed Abouar's visit to Doha in February 2016, two agreements were signed in the deepening relations between Nigeria and Qatar. They were on the avoidance of double taxation and the prevention of fiscal evasion with respect to tax income, as well as bilateral air service agreement in that standardizing the model of evasion business and increasing flight frequency in destination. Details on the Qatar Emirs visit are still sketchy, but as at the time of this report, high-level discussions are ongoing between the leadership of both countries behind closed doors. They have the Qatari Investment Fund, which has huge financial resources, and um, so they're ready to invest uh, in, uh, in various areas. And they find Nigeria a very attractive market. Uh, and of course, um, they, they have a lot of faith uh, in Mr. President and his government and the vision of Mr. President going forward. So they're very keen to strengthen the uh, excellent relations that exist between the two countries and start really uh, cooperating with, um, with Nigeria at uh, an economical level, uh, but also people to people uh, a level and a diplomatic uh, level as well. So, um, so this was the basis of their discussion. And um, in that context, Mr. President also talked about the possibility of, um, of them investing in a, a possible recharging of the Lake Chad, um, you know, from the uh, rivers of the Congo Basin. So, um, so it was an excellent meeting. And as I said, the rapport was very, very good. Resolved that uh, Nigeria and Qatar will partner on railways, will partner on aviation, will partner on power, uh, and then will also partner on agriculture. So I think uh, the whole of it is um, um, promising. And regarding the air services agreement, uh, Qatar is coming seven times uh, a day, and then they will increase to uh, two times daily. And uh, Qatar also recognized the fact that um, there need to be some competition uh, coming from Nigeria uh, by the setting up of the Nigeria Air, uh, which they will be more than willing to support in any way that we would uh, discuss with them. So this is the highlight of it, and I think um, it's very promising, and I think it's good for our country, and I, th I think it's uh, also good for their own country as well. It's mutually beneficial. So how far so far on Nigeria Air? Well, so very far. You remember it was just temporarily suspended and uh, you could see some of the reasons at the time we were facing election and so on and so forth. But now we're back and everything is back on track. The business case has been done and uh, we will soon start. 
Moving on, Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Emmanuel Ibe Kachuku, has expressed Nigeria's delight for the burden interest to support Nigeria's infrastructural development in the oil sector. The minister said this in Ridia at the meeting with the Minister of Energy and Industry and Mineral Resources of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Khalid Al Fali. A correspondent, Lydia Samson, reports that Dr. Kachuku is in Saudi Arabia on the direct of President Muhammad Buhari to explore wide areas of mutual collaboration, especially in the midstream and downstream sector. Kachiko is also due to discuss global oil market development and ahead of the Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee of OPEC, which will hold in Jida early next month. Nigeria was recently co-opted into the specialized committee at the meeting of the Council in Baku. The elevation of Nigeria to the JMMC was in recognition of the key role of Nigeria's Minister of State and head of delegation to OPEC, Dr. Kachiku, played in the diplomatic shuttle and negotiation that led to the founding of the Declaration of Cooperation in 2016. President Mohamed Buhari has expressed sadness over the killing of some Christian youth during the Easter procession Sunday night in Gombe and reprisal killings of the law enforcement officer allegedly responsible for the traffic incident. In a statement through the senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity, Gaba Shil, the president extended his condolence to the families of the victims of the victims while wishing the several injured speedy recovery. The president also commended the state government, Christian Association of Nigeria, and the National Security and Civil Defense Corps for, step, for, step in, for steps taken in bringing the situation under control and promised further investigation into the Saad incident. The federal government has also condoled with the families of the two persons, a Nigerian and a Briton, who were killed in Friday's attack on Kajiro Kata Resort, a popular resort in Kaduna State, promising that the killers will be apprehended and brought to justice. In a statement by the special assistant to the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, the statement assured that security agencies are doing everything possible to ensure that the Three persons who were kidnapped in the attack are released unarmed. The minister said the attacks that led to the death of Miss Fai Moni and a British and a, a British aid worker and Mr. Matthew Oguche, a Nigerian, while visiting the popular resort is a setback on effort to promote tourism in the country. The minister in his message assured that security agencies will leave no stone, stone unturned in their efforts to apprehend to apprehend the killers and bring them to justice. Lai Mohammed maintained that the federal government has recently stepped up effort to curtail violence and banditry in some parts of the country through better intelligence gathering and increased collaboration by the security agencies. The minister said the effort have started paying off as the level of violent attacks, banditry and kidnapping is reduced nationwide. Lai Mohammed said government will not relent until all parts of the country is safe for all, whether they're terrorists, business people or ordinary Nigerians who just want to live their lives under an atmosphere of peace and security. Troops of 72 Force Battalion Makodi deployed for internal security operation in Kasinala local government area of Benue State have killed five mili militia recovered arms, vehicles and motorcycles. A statement by the acting director Ami Public Relations Officer indicates that the timely intervention prevented escalation of the clashes between the two Tief clans. The troop response was sickle to information received about planned attacks on Kassina Ala. Subsequently, the special forces ambushed and killed some of the criminals. The Nigerian armed forces the Nigerian armed forces applaud those that I mean, applauded those that provided information that led to the successful operation and appealed for cooperation with security agencies to enhance rapid response to threat. Still on security issues, the Air Tax Force of Oppression, Deron Mekia, has neutralized no fewer than 10 armed bandits as Shubudu Forest area of Zamfara State. According to NAF, 
Director of Public Relations Officer Air Commodore Ibukini Daramola. This was achieved on April 22, 2019, while the ATF was responding to a request for close air support by ground troops of Sector 7 of responsibility of Operation Sharon Daji, who had come into contact with M bandits in Shinkafi local government area. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Air Force has taken delivery of two Augusta 109 power attack helicopter, which are currently being assembled for induction during the forthcoming 2019 NAFTA celebration taking place in Abuja from the 27th to the 29th, April 2019. Activities for the 55th anniversary celebration of the Nigerian Air Force has commenced in Abuja with a media briefing. Najatu Tijani has details. This picture, taken in 1967 of the head of state, General Yakubu Gowan, discussing with some Nigerian Air Force L-29 pilots, gives us an insight into how far the force has evolved to become what it is today. Chairman of the committee set up to oversee the NAFTA celebrations, Air Commodore Namdi Ananaba, says 2019 promises to be full of events aimed at showcasing the capability of the force while responding to national security, which explains the theme. We realize that the NAF has a lot to celebrate and showcase. From being a service, which during the Civil War used its bare hands to throw bombs out of aeroplanes, we have progressed to one that is highly professional and equipped with advanced aircraft and unmanned aerial vehicles capable of precision strikes from far distances. The Nigerian Air Force says the event is also an avenue to reflect on the progress it has made by showing taxpayers some of its notable achievements, including the reactivation of previously grounded aircraft and the acquisition of 16 new ones, with expectations for 18 more by 2020. The Nigerian Air Force is assuring Nigerians that every precaution has been taken to make the series of events safe. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. Nationwide continues in our Lagos Network Center. Inginu will take us through a report from that zone. Hello, Inginu. Kukende, it's good to see you and welcome to Lagos. About 100 con uh, countries are today observing the World Book and Copyright Day, also known as International Day of the Book. The theme for this year's celebration is Share a Book. Ruth Ario Samuel tells us more. Books are a collection of words put together by an author to educate, inform, and entertain its readers. A book is a link between the past and the future, a bridge between generations and across cultures. The moment your work is created and it is fused in a medium through which it can be seen, can be perceived, can be read, or can be heard, then such world enjoy protection under copyright law. The history of book dates back to the 16th century, where the first ever book was produced in Egypt. Since the first publication, there has been a renaissance and crave for information and trends which were predominantly found in books. When I read, at times it's an entertainment to me. Most of the times I learn from reading. To learn more about life is and to learn more about what you have been taught in school too. With the increasing quest for knowledge, World Book and Copyright Day was introduced on 23rd April 1995 by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization to promote the benefits of book and reading. To celebrate authors of books and publishers and the culture of reading so that people will continue to read and authors will continue to published works. Authors, I find out that they put a lot of their experience in their books, so I try to read. The 24th edition of Book and Copyright Day seeks to call attention of Nigerians to the culture of reading, especially among the youth. In Lagos, Ruth Ariel Samuel, NTA News. 
The Lagos State Commissioner of Police has commended the Lagos Neighborhood Safety Corps for collaborating with the police to secure the state. In a message to the second anniversary of the security outfit, the commissioner described the officials as disciplined and dedicated. Abola de Salami completes the report. <laughs> It is often said that security is everybody's business. When a group of people now take it upon itself to protect lives and property, it is worthy of commendation. This was exactly what happened at the second anniversary of the Lagos Neighborhood Safety Corps, where speakers commended the operatives for helping to maintain peace in the state. We are just starting. If you know what Lagos is to Nigeria and what we need to secure Lagos, then you will know that what I'm saying is not uh, an overstatement. This agency will keep on working at full throttle. We will not slow down at all because we know when you slow down one minute, robbers, criminals will take two hours, three hours, and we should be ahead of them anyway. The community policing, I mean, these guys are members of their community, of their various communities, so they know the nooks and crannies of the community. I think they've been pretty much very effective, and I think we can continue to encourage them to do more. They've helped to minimize crime and reduce crime rate in Lagos State. The chairman of the board of Lagos Neighborhood Safety Agency, Israel Ajao, acknowledged the support of the state government in the provision of vehicles, communication gadgets, and other things that have made the job of security in the states easy. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. Tomato is an important fruit vegetable in Nigeria. It is a major condiment for soups and stew, being a seasonal crop. Consumers are forced to pay more when it is out of season. Annie Daniels examines how tomatoes can be preserved to avoid seasonal scarcity. The tomatoes in a beautiful shade of red we are visibly firm and fresh. Nice to the eyes, they were obviously more succulent than those found in other markets. There is one that is coming from Katsina State and, uh, and Bauchi State, the one that is coming from Kano, the one that is coming from Jos. Their robust appearance is so tempting that a buyer may purchase more tomatoes than originally intended. They are calling it just that UTC. It's pure blood red. It is less in water, less in seed, thick in skin. If you press it like that, you can see it is very strong. Therefore, it can take longest time. We use just to provide this seed. It's not all about fresh and succulent tomatoes because right here, we saw some baskets with degraded tomatoes, the sort that are generally referred to as rotten. People who are selling rice, they used to come and buy it and go wash the that is spoiled one and cook their rice. If you meet this spoiled the tomatoes, you know I me. Mean? When you wash it, you can cook it and everything you can do it. The quality of the tomatoes is going to be depend your price. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. That's our contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues after this break. Please stay with us. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years.
good to have you still with us. And now moving on to legislative matters, the House of Representatives has passed for second reading a bill for an act to establish the Chartered Institute of Meditators and Conciliators of Nigeria. The lawmakers on resumption on Tuesday's plenary after Easter break deliberated on the bill which seeks to determine standards, knowledge and skill required of persons to qualify for registration as members. The House agreed that alternative dispute resolution mechanism which forms the highlight of the bill would lessen the rigor and financial burden of litigation. In another development, the House has in support of a motion on the Tiff Jukun crisis in Taraba State resolved to investigate on the lead causes of the crisis. It also urged increased security presence in affected communities and prompt assistance to the victims. Eight House of Representatives members elect from Niger State have pledged to abide by the decision of the Party or Progressives Congress over the leadership of the Ninth Assembly. Member elect representing Lapai Agei Federal Constituency, Abdullah Mahmoud, in company of all the members elect and Niger State APC Chairman, disclosed this decision at a press briefing in Mina. Dada Mohammed reports. Speaking on behalf of the eight House of Representatives members elect from Niger State, Abdullahi Mahmouda hinged their decision on the outcome of meetings held with the state governor, party executives, and other members which resolved to respect party supremacy in picking the leadership of the Ninth Assembly. We, members elect from the Niger State, the North Central region, have resolved to support Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila, who is also uh, the leader of the Eighth Assembly, who will support him to become the Speaker in the Ninth Assembly. Naja State All Progressive Congress Chairman Jibril Imam, speaking earlier, described the decision taken as the outcome of several meetings both at the national and regional levels to harmonize the party's stand on the leadership arrangement of the Ninth Assembly. Out of 10 House of Representatives members elect in Naja State, only five attended the meeting, while three sent apologies with two members absent. In Mina, Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. The former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onoga's name has been removed from the National Judicial Council member list over the weekend. He was tried, convicted and found guilty over non-declaration of assets by the Code of Conduct Tribunal. What are the implications of the trial? How will this uphold the fight against corruption in Nigeria? Abdukari Mohamed Zurm has details. Reaction still trailed the judgment of the Code of Conduct Tribunal over the case of the former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onogan. While some say it is a bit harsh, public affairs analyst Ibrahim Modibo lauded government's efforts to curb corruption in all fronts. I must commend the judiciary and also commend the government for this wonderful thought of bringing to justice people that were generally considered as untouchables. Legal practitioner Ali Olimu believes that for progress to reign in the system, individuals must be made to pay for their actions irrespective of position. When the common man is put on trial, you don't see the public outrage. But when a big man is involved, you see people crying from all sorts of nooks and crannies of the country. For us to move forward, we must all be equal before the law. It would be recalled that the judgment was passed last week and the former CGN has promised to appeal the case. In Abuja, Abdukarim Mohamed Zurmi, NTA News. Oral indigents, or men in the diaspora, have been called upon to prioritize the development and progress of the town. This was at a special Thanksgiving service in appreciation of Supreme Court's judgment in favor of the community. Ahmed Fulani has details. Oro is the country home of the Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Muhammad, and in continuation of their Thanksgiving service to God for their victory at the Supreme Court in Abuja, converged at St. Andrew Catholic Church, Oro, where Christians asked God to continue to uplift the sons and daughters of the community. It was indeed a happy reunion for the indigents of Lakele area of Oro Tan as they converged on St. Andrew Catholic Church, Oro, to appreciate God 
for favorable Supreme Court judgment. The Paris press referenced Father Joseph Awoyale and National President Oro Community, but De Alayoku advised Oro indigents to live harmoniously with one another towards the development of the town. My message to the people of Oro Town is to continue to have the fear of God, both Christian and Muslim. You can see that we are like one family. And so that is the spirit for our progress and improvement. Members of the town were later hosted at Lakele Square, where they had enough to eat and drink. I'm Oro in Redford, local government area of Kora State. Ahmed Fulani, NTA News. Nigeria and Niger border communities sensitize border communities. Let's get details of that report from Sadia in our Sokoto Network Center. Hello, Sadia. Welcome to Sokoto. Kevin State Police Command has paraded over 50 suspects in connection with various criminal offenses committed across the state. The State Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Benju Magarba, who paraded suspects, emphasized on intelligence sharing and community policing in combating crimes. Nuratan Kwakili reports. Those paraded include 15 kidnapped suspects who conspired to kidnap unsuspecting members of the public at various locations, including one Yusuf Danjuma who attempted to snatch a three-year-old boy from his mother for ritual, as well as seven armed robbery suspects arrested by police detectives at various locations with assorted weapons after committing the dastardly act. Others include eight suspects of culpable homicide, including two young men who confessed to killing a woman and her daughter in Dole Kaina, the local government area of the state, and a 25-year-old Hapsasani who was alleged to have stabbed her husband to this following an argument. Paraded also were seven suspects of rape, six persons arrested for defrauding a businessman of 19 million naira, and a three-man car theft syndicate. The Kabi State Police Commissioner Mohammed Anju Magadba said the suspect will be prosecuted according to the law. Some of the suspects who confessed to the crimes pleaded for leniency and promised not to go back to the crime after serving their punishments. The Kabi State Police Command also raided some criminal hideouts where arrests were made and assorted drugs recovered. In Birnin Kebi, Nora Tankwakili, NTA News. Nigerians and Nigerians living in the border town have been urged to see the artificial demarcation a symbol of promoting unity, social as well as cultural and economic development. This came to the fore at the joint sensitization campaign along Nigeria-Niger international boundary held in Koni, Niger Republic and Sabunbiri local government of Sokoto State. The report. Nigeria has an area of about 356,669 square miles and the country's borders have a length of approximately 2,515 miles. The Nigeria's border with Niger Republic runs for about 930 miles. Nigerians and Nigerians had for long lived as brothers and sisters in spite of the demarcation erected by colonial masters. In recent times, the National Boundary Commission had done a lot towards providing basic amenities to the inhabitants of border towns and villages. This time around, the Commission and its counterparts in Niger Republic is holding a joint sensitization campaign along border towns to sensitize people of both countries on the importance of the artificial demarcation poles erected. Palace of Sarkin Kwani in Niger Republic was the venue of the sensitization campaign. We organized this, this sensitization so that we come and interface with them, we come and interact. We also go and show them where the boundary between Nigeria and Niger lies in this sector of the international boundary. Know that uh, uh, the, uh, the boundary has made by colonial uh, rulers. Now we are independent and it uh, our duty to reduce conflict and to develop our boundary areas. From Birunin Kondi, the sensitization campaign moved to Ilele local government area of Sokoto State, Nigeria, where the same issues bothering on the importance of demarcation and peaceful coexistence among people living in border towns were discussed. The National Boundary Commission officials and its counterparts in Niger Republic were also at Sabon Birni local government area of Sokoto State, where a similar sensitization campaign took place. 
That's our contribution from Sapoto. It's now back to Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Salia. The tanker explosion, which claimed two lives and left many injured recently in Ibadan, has been described as an avoidable tragedy if motorists are mindful of traffic rules and regulation. Director General of National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Mustafa Meaja, said this while inspecting the incident scene in Ibadan. Correspondent Shola Wahid has details. <laughs> Commercial vehicles caught fire while some people were trying to scoop fuel from it. Two people were burnt beyond recognition while six vehicles and some motorbikes were also destroyed in the inferno. Director General of National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Mustafa Mayaja, represented while inspecting the scene of the accident and the damage caused by it, advised drivers and road users to be mindful of traffic rules and regulations to avoid road carnage. But what is important now is how to bring support to our brothers and sisters who were affected. That is of our immediate uh, concern now. Then the other agencies will take care of their responsibilities and come up with a, a, a position so that all of us will all uh, key to it here. Yeah. During the course of that fire, the fire services men were here. Well, it took them 45 minutes to assess the venue of that incident because of what people are, they were barricaded from going into that scene. If they had allowed them, this incident wouldn't have escalated to this point. When our men got there, we turned out uh, Baggy, which is the nearest station to the place. Then our headquarters, we, we turned our crew also to complement their effort. He emphasized that federal government will continue to ensure that the lives and property of the people are secured and advise sympathizers and onlookers at tragic scenes to always give considerations to rescue operatives during disaster to minimize casualties in the Badanshola Wahid, NT News. As the World Max World Book and Copyright Day, there is the need for Nigerians, particularly youths, to embrace better reading culture to enhance their mental capacity. Abdul Salam Jibril in this special report explores reasons behind poor reading habits and the important role libraries play in inculcating permanent literacy through reading. The late literary icon, Professor Chinua Achebe, once said, He who stops reading stops living. Reading stimulates imagination, encourages curiosity, promotes quick learning, and expands horizons. However, recent studies across the country reveals a sharp decline in reading culture, particularly among youths. Jide Ojo, who is a book enthusiast, attributes this to the quest for livelihood rather than seeking knowledge. The rat race for money has become a disincentive to even capacity building. So a lot of people are in a rat race to make money rather than to seek knowledge. Nabuike, along with some Nigerians with a similar view, had this to say. Before I can stay three hours, then three hours fully and I'll read. But now, within 40 minutes, I'll say I have work to do tomorrow. Let me just rest. The stress of going up and down to source for a living is the order of the day. That's almost every time I'm busy. While books play a significant role in our lives, libraries has the responsibility of making information available in different formats to encourage reading culture. The proposed headquarters of the National Library of Nigeria, which has been under construction for the past 13 years, clearly this site is not encouraging and lacks incentive for Nigerians to engage in the study of relevant and contemporary literature. At one of the public libraries in the FCT, the librarians here lament the story state of the facilities. Most of the time, no AC, no light, nothing, no fan. How do you want somebody to read and assimilate under such conditions? Then couple with old books, old books that we have in stock. National Library is not being given enough money to fund the library. Most of the books are out of date. So if you are not funded, you cannot be current with the, the latest book, the latest materials. As a panacea, some Nigerians urge the modernization of libraries to meet 21st century standards, as well as create adequate awareness on the importance of reading books. In Abuja, Abdul Salam Jubril, NTA News. 
Nigeria should increase funding and revive technical and vocational training at all levels if the country hopes to achieve inclusive and quality education to promote lifelong learning opportunities for all in the country by the year 2030, as envisaged by the Sustainable Development Goal. This is the opinion at a national conversation aimed at assessing the education level in the country in order to come up with solutions that will assist government implement the 10 pillars of the ministerial strategic plan to achieve the roadmap entitled Education for Change, improving education curriculum and policy by getting input from employers, especially from the private sector, to suggest skills needed was also stressed just as training of qualified teachers and involvement of state and government. When we talk of quality education, it's not the money. It's maximizing the quality of what you get out of every naira spent. You can spend double this and not get good educational outcomes. It is our responsibility today to see that even the policies that have been promulgated are implemented. We're choosing education because it is very much interwoven with the welfare of individuals, welfare of Nigerian poor, which is the place where we have our primary interest. Still on education, the federal government is to establish literacy centres in all the 104 federal government colleges in the country. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education, Sony Ochono, said that this at the launch of the pilot literacy centre at the federal government college, Otobi Benue State, which is one of the centres of the six to be established across the country. The first phase is starting with 20 federal government colleges targeting non-literate cadre workers such as matrons, cooks, watchmen, drivers, cleaners, gardeners, as well as all the people within the host communities. Achana said the plan is to achieve the Sustainable Development Goal as DG4, which is ensuring inclusive and equitable education, as well as promote a lifelong learning opportunities for all. and numerous of the workers of this college as well as the immediate community. It is my honor and privilege to launch these instructional materials for this adult and mass literacy program. It's time to link up with Agatha in our Bini Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Agatha. Hello, Kende. A warm welcome to Benin. The federal government has said that it will not rest on its oars to sustain effective road maintenance mechanism through the intervention of the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency, FEMA. This is coming at a time the agency is carrying out rehabilitation of some roads in Agbo and Wari axis of Delta State. Austin Edemudu reports. Since the beginning of the current administration, the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, has stepped up its activities in tackling the menace of dilapidated roads that have surpassed their lifespan across the country. At Umunede Abo Axis, major repairs have been carried out on faith portions with potholes. The rehabilitation, which comes in phases, involves excavation work concrete base and asphalting. Over the years now, this place has been like abandoned area. But with this now, I believe the, the stores over here are going to appreciate the government. Similar intervention has also taken place at Wari Seple Amukwe Aziz, which has over time become a nightmare to road users. This work done by farmer, I think, is, is encouraging. It's encouraging and it's good. And I know by the grace of God, those dead three accidents, uh, daily accidents that used to take place here will not take place again. However, the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, is of the opinion that the current rehabilitation exercise will only have a lasting impression if people desist from blocking the drains, in as much as the intervention will be sustained across the country. We call it Operation Safe Passage. It's to make all our roads portal-free and uh, uh, all face sessions uh, 
repaired. We have done the same thing in other places too, just like, like uh, uh, Bini, Agbo, Asaba Expressway. You go to several locations there, you can see that we have actually tackled a lot of sections there. The rehabilitation is still ongoing across the badly affected roads in Delta State. I'm Austin Edemodo, NTA News. The Obar of Benin, AY II, has sued for the reactivation of the Police Community Relations Committee to help in the fight against insecurity and criminality in the society. It was when he received the State Police Commissioner, Dan Malam Mohamed. Udwakobong Achibong reports. The Benin monarch who suggested the setting up of security watch in various parts of the state to arrest the increasing rate of insecurity called on the federal government to support the police financially and materially to enable them beef up security and discharge their duties effectively. But by AYR II expressed satisfaction with the achievements recorded by the new commissioner since assumption of duty. So I show you that whenever you have any problems, you should consider the parents always your own. Uh, don't look at it as um, uh, too much of an official the state's commissioner of police, Dan Mala Mohammed, said he was in the palace to receive royal blessings to enable him to succeed in his responsibilities. The Oba of Benin also received the state commandant of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, with a promise to support the command for the benefit of the people. In Benin, Urakobong Achibong, NTA News. And that ends our package. Kende, it's back to you. Thank you, Agatha. Well, it's time to take another break. More news after this time out. Don't go away. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News. Instagram at NTA Network. Twitter at NTA News Now. YouTube at NTA News Online. All visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can beat the rich. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Thank you for staying with us. Renewable energy development can make a remarkable impact in Nigeria if the bottom-up approach, which involves indigenous community control, is adopted. These are the views of solar energy experts in Ontario, Canada, who believe strongly in the power of renewable energy cooperative at the grassroots in Africa. Let's now join Joy Osiago for details. From an adaptation point of view, if, if we are going to a world that is going to be uh, more chaotic in terms of weather, then we also need to move away from a centralized grid system to a distributed grid. And a distributed grid means that you're, you're going to have to have communities more involved. To maximize the economic benefits and public endorsement for clean energy sources like wind and solar, Community participation and ownership is imperative, as observed by Ontario solar advocates like Matt Zipkin. You know, and we've seen that here in southern Ontario with wind, so not, well, not with solar as much. Uh, the reason why they're able to do it is because the people actually want it. While developed economies like Germany and Denmark have made tremendous progress with the community involvement and ownership, these are okay is pushing for more African countries like Nigeria to get the communities involved in renewable energy projects as they create a multitude of benefits in comparison to commercially developed projects. And solar energy doesn't require a huge infrastructure. You don't need transmission lines. You don't need uh, transformers. In Ontario and in Canada, as well as North America, we see Africa as a very, very large emerging market. 
Renewable energy enthusiasts in Ontario strongly believe that when the strategies for inclusive economic development are situated within a framework grounded in the traditional values of the people and community investment, countries like Nigeria can overcome the obstacles standing between the people and wealth. In Ontario, Canada, Joy Usiago, NTA News. Kaduna Network Center is next uh, is our next stop on nationwide as farmers in Kano appeal for completion of the Gahari irrigation farm. And Rukea is our guide. Thank you, Kendi. Glad to have you join us in Kaduna, beginning with transport service. The Kaduna Abuja train service has been receiving high turnout of passengers recently. With the Easter celebration over, Abdullahi Muhammad examines passengers' turnout and the ticketing process at the Regasa train station in Kaduna. His reports. It's been a very busy day for a lot of people who turn out early in the morning here to buy tickets on their way to Abuja. You can see a lot of people are on the queue to buy tickets. Some have explained that uh, they got it uh, easy, but others say no, there's still a lot of uh, things to correct in the process of buying the ticket. Mr. Abudin here also uh, tries to share his experience. Mr. Abudin. Yeah, the effort is so very good. The only correction or advice there is the effort of the uh, manual issue. I wish it should be electronic so that we fasten and easten the situation for the workers and the, and the passengers as well. Uh, for me to get this ticket today, I have to be here since 7 a.m. For me to get a ticket, now I'll be able to board for the 10 a.m. Uh, but this is 10.30 train now. Even the standing ticket, the people have to fight, struggle, fighting. They should make it online for us to be able to buy tickets online. The influx of passengers to the Regasa train station this morning says it all. A lot of them prefer to take the train to Abuja instead of uh, the road, despite the fact that security agencies have been making efforts to boost the confidence of road travelers. Well, that could have reduced the kind of pressure that we have seen this morning in Regasa train station. From the Regasa train station in Kaduna, my name is Abdullah Mohammed, NTN News. On judicial matters, the Kaduna State Governor Nasser Ahmed El Rafai has filed replies on the petition submitted by the People's Democratic Party, the PDP governorship candidate Isa Ashurukudan, challenging the credibility of the recently concluded governorship election. Mohamed Umar Ajengi completes the report. Section 285 of the 1999 Constitution as amended provides that a defendant has 14 days to respond to allegations tabled before the tribunal. In line with this provision, Governor Erufai files replies in response to allegations of manipulation of results, cancellation of figures during the coalition, as well as wrong posting of results sheet leveled against him by the PDP governorship candidate in the last election. Husseini Barmogumi represented Governor Erufai at the tribunal. After going through the petition, you can see the confidence in us is just because it's mandatory by law that we must respond and I wish you will be around during the hearings and see how watery the whole of the thing is. They alleged things that are just imaginary. The governorship election tribunal will soon commence sitting in Kaduna by Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. And now agriculture, farmers in some parts of Kano North Senatorial Zone are appealing to the federal government to resume work on the abundant Gari irrigation project to promote all year round farming and reduce rural urban drift. Abdullahi Mustafa, who visited the site, reports that the project was abandoned about 20 years ago. With a volume of 214 million cubic meters, Gari is one of the biggest dams in Kano State. Among other objectives of its construction, are flood control, water supply, and irrigation. These are benefits residents of surrounding communities have been yearning to enjoy for decades. This is the main reservoir of Gari Dam in Kano State. It was constructed more than 50 years ago with the aim of ensuring all year round agriculture in about several local government areas across Kano and Gao State. However, this massive infrastructure was left unattended until 22 years ago during the defunct Petroleum Special Trust Fund when there was a project to develop about 20,000 hectares uh, of irrigable land around Quinty and Kazore local government areas. But the project was uh, rounded up uh, alongside the PTF itself. 
Before its suspension, the first phase of the irrigation infrastructure was nearing completion. The main distribution canal was put to use by locals whose farms are close by. Drawing water from there is however not too easy for the likes of Musa Mekifi. He buried 60 pipes to pump water to his watermelon plot situated about 300 meters away. Many of us have pumping machines, but incurred huge losses due to lack of water. The nearly two decades of suspension of the project leads to the wearing away of a substantial part of the base of unused canals. We can say we lost a lot of uh, resources there by abandoning the, the project. The completion of Gari Irrigation Project by the federal government will create direct and indirect jobs to about 1 million people in Kano and Jigao states, as well as reduce cost of production to the likes of Musa Mikivi. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Kaduna back to Kende in Abuja for more stories on Nationwide. Thank you, Rukaya. Moving on now, following renewed joint military offensive in northern Borno, the Boko Haram terrorist group in, is been restricted to the island of Lake Chad. The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tukuburte, said this while on his an operational visit to the troops fighting the Boko Haram in northern Borno. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that... The, uh, Lieutenant General Brute was represented by the Chief of Training and Operations, Major General Lamidi Adioshu. These are Chadian troops, Sector 2 of the Multinational Joint Task Force, MNJTF. Alongside their Nigerian counterpart, Sector 3, the tactical mobile fighting formation recently killed 39 Boko Haram terrorists in Cross Kawa, Northern Borno, and liberated people abducted mostly women and children. With the joint effort of multinational joint task force and national operations of all the countries involved, you discover that Boko Haram is now locking mostly around the borders, especially in the dangerous and uh, inaccessible areas of uh, the Tumbus, the, 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 the islands. And the best way to undo this is to have concentration of forces. This is the Easter festive period, and the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Boratai, is here to felicitate with troops in the front line, commend their effective collaboration with the Chadian troops and efforts in keeping the terrorists at bay. Addressing special forces in Kotkawa headquarters sector 2 and troops of the 142 Battalion Mungunu, Lieutenant General Boratai charged them to sustain the current offensive posture. We must never, ever allow the reverse to be the case again. Now we are on the offensive. We should never be withdrawn back to defensive. The Chief of Army Staff, Nigeria as a whole, appreciate you and they are doing all possible to liaise with the political leadership to make sure the requirements we are lacking are provided. He also visited the sick and wounded at the Sector 3 Medical Services, Munguru. The Multinational Joint Task Force, MNJTF, with headquarters in Njamaina Chad, is a combination of mostly troops from the Lake Chad Basin member nations from Kuka local government area of Borno State. Ismail Musa, NTA News. Moving on to sports, Nigeria's Golden Eagle faced Guinean counterparts in Afghan under 17 semi finals as all Africa's senior badminton champions enters a day two in Potakot. River State, Kene and Magwadike has details of this in all the sports reports. Nigeria's Golden Eaglets will on Wednesday face Guinea in the first semi-final.